Hello, and welcome to this learning presentation on how to approach the extended listening sections of the Lingua Skill Listening and Reading Test. First, here's some information about the Lingua Skill Test. It's a computer based multi level test, meaning that it can be taken anywhere by test takers of all ability levels. Lingua Skill assesses your English language proficiency using a huge variety of test questions and accurately gives test takers a language proficiency level on the CFR scale. It's an adaptive test, meaning that an algorithm is used to give test takers questions of various difficulties, depending on their performance, in order to accurately determine the test takers level of English at the end of the test. First, I'll go through some advice on how to approach an extended listening test. Tip one, read questions carefully and pick out key words. It's best to look through the questions and options before you play the audio. This will help you to follow the long listening and to understand what you need to listen for. Look out for keywords in the questions and options that you think you may hear in the audio. In the example here, you need to listen for preference. That is, what the people like. You may hear information about all three options, but only one of the options will be something the people like. In other words, the correct answer. Test designers often paraphrase the words you hear in the audio when writing the test questions and options. So you may not hear the same words that you read. Test designers, however, use some of the keywords in the audio to help you follow the information you hear, acting as signposts. Remember, you may hear the same word in the audio that you read in one of the options, but that doesn't mean that option is the correct answer. We'll apply this tip in the extended listening test on the next slides. Tip two, don't freeze up if you miss some information. Stay relaxed and just move on to the next question. Keep up with the audio and don't fall behind. The information delivered in the audio is presented in the same order as the questions. So you need to keep up with the audio to answer the next questions. Tip three. In LinguaSkill, you can listen twice and you control the play button. This is a great advantage because you can relax easier and move through the test at your own pace. Let's look at an extended listening task from LinguaSkill. First, look at the black box. This gives you instructions and sets the context. Before we listen, let's look through the questions and options. It's a good idea to take note of words and expressions that stand out in the questions and options to help you follow the recording. I've highlighted some of the key words you'll hear when you listen. These act as signposts to help you follow the audio. Take a minute now to look through the questions and options. It's important that you spend a bit of time reading before you listen. This preparation enables you to quickly locate the question being talked about and focus on the detail of what's being said. So you can choose the correct option and remember, just because you hear a word that's written in the option doesn't mean that's the correct option. You really need to focus on the detail of the talk. Also, you don't always hear the options spoken about in the order they're written in the questions. So keep this in mind when you listen. Finally, it's important to note that keywords in each question, for example, meals in question four and guides in five indicate what the speaker is going to talk about in the particular part of the audio. So identifying keywords in the questions will help you to focus on the appropriate part of the audio. We're going to listen to Sally now, but we're not going to answer the questions this time round. We'll listen a second time and answer the questions later. This time, just follow the questions in order as the speaker gives information on each one and listen out for the signposting words that I've highlighted so you don't lose your place. All I want you to do is listen for the general meaning, 
not for the answer. OK, let's listen now. My name is Sally Cruz, and I'm going to tell you about a fabulous vacation I had whitewater rafting on a river in the USA. I was with my son and daughter and 20 other people in large rubber boats on this very rough, fast river, my first time ever whitewater rafting. I knew I'd get cold and wet, but that was part of the adventure. I thought I'd find the wild water scary, and I did at first, but my children just said, Come on, Mom, you'll be fine, and I soon found my courage. The river was beautiful, with waterfalls and quiet pools where we could swim. I loved the landscape. Each day we spent about five or six hours on the river, then ended the day on beautiful sandy beaches. It was a real delight watching my kids unplug from their computers and spend hours playing in the river, on the sand, and simply enjoying nature. This was something they couldn't really do at home. The tents in the campsites weren't very comfortable, but because of the fresh air and exercise, I had no problem sleeping. The youngsters on the trip stayed up late talking round the campfire, but I could never keep my eyes open long enough to join in. One of the best things for me was waking up in the morning and looking out of my tent at the beautiful view. The food was the best camp food ever. Breakfasts included eggs or pancakes. For lunch, we'd stop on a beach for a picnic. The children sometimes complained there were too many salads and they didn't get burgers. But there were always cookies available, so they accepted the healthy diet. Dinners were delicious. We once had freshly caught fish. And best of all, I didn't have to cook any of it. Actually, I love cooking, but it's nice to take a break occasionally. The young men and women who were our guides were incredible. Their days lasted from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. They were responsible for 20 of us and our gear for five days. They cooked our meals, rode our rafts, set up our tents, played games with us on the beach, all with big smiles on their faces. Whitewater rafting was truly an adventure I'll not forget. It's a long audio almost three minutes, and it's challenging to concentrate for this amount of time. Hopefully, the highlighted words helped you to follow the information given in the audio. But remember, just because you hear a word given in the option doesn't mean that option is the correct answer. In question two, for example, all the options contain words that you hear, but only one option is correct. Let's break the audio into three parts and we'll answer and analyze the questions. Let's answer question one first. Read the question and the options. Now, we're going to listen to the first part of the audio and answer question one only. Here's the beginning of the audio transcribed so you can listen to it as you listen. We know we'll find the answer to question one here because the test questions run in the same order as the information in the audio, and also because the question states at the beginning of the trip, I've highlighted the place where you find the answer in the transcript, so you should pay special attention to the word in green as you listen, then answer the question. My name is Sally Cruz. And I'm going to tell you about a fabulous vacation I had whitewater rafting on a river in the USA. I was with my son and daughter and 20 other people in large rubber boats on this very rough, fast river, my first time ever whitewater rafting. 
I knew I'd get cold and wet, but that was part of the adventure. I thought I'd find the wild water scary, and I did at first. But my children just said, "Come on, Mom, you'll be fine," and I soon found my courage. Did you get the answer? It's frightened of the river water. Here, the test designer has used synonyms: frightened and scared or scary. The incorrect options may use words and expressions directly taken from the audio, such as cold and wet. But don't be fooled. Listen carefully, and you'll get the correct answer. Although Sally mentions being cold and wet, she doesn't say she was unhappy about it. She says this was part of the adventure. So this option is not the correct answer. She also talks about her children, but doesn't mention their safety. So that's not correct either. Now let's look at questions two and three, as the answers to these questions appear close together in the audio. Before we listen, read through questions two and three and the options, noting the words that stand out. In question two, you probably took note of words in the options rather than the question. The nouns "children," "natural world," "water," and "computer" stand out because they are mostly objects that are easy to picture in your mind. Listen for these in the audio, but remember that hearing a word from an option doesn't always mean that option is the correct answer. Okay, let's listen now and read, noting the words I've highlighted in green to answer question two. And the words I've highlighted in blue to answer question three. The river was beautiful, with waterfalls and quiet pools where we could swim. I loved the landscape. Each day we spent about five or six hours on the river, then ended the day on beautiful sandy beaches. It was a real delight watching my kids unplug from their computers and spend hours playing in the river, on the sand, and simply enjoying nature. This was something they couldn't really do at home. The tents in the campsites weren't very comfortable, but because of the fresh air and exercise, I had no problem sleeping. The youngsters on the trip stayed up late talking round the campfire. But I could never keep my eyes open long enough to join in. One of the best things for me was waking up in the morning and looking out of my tent at the beautiful view. Did you get the answers? Let's take some time now to look at the words highlighted green and blue, and notice how these are paraphrased in the correct options. Question two uses the expression "special pleasure" to paraphrase "real delight" in the audio. A natural word, natural world, in the option is expressed as nature in the audio. The answer to question three is a bit harder to get, as an idiomatic expression is used in the audio. Sally says, "I could never keep my eyes open," which means she was so tired she slept easily. Question three is made more difficult by directly lifting part of the audio into one of the incorrect options: stay up late talking with people around the campfire. This is a very clear example to show that just because you hear it in the audio doesn't mean it's the correct option. Again, you can see that incorrect options use words and expressions directly from the audio. Test designers do this to test that candidates can understand the meaning of the audio and aren't just matching words they hear with words in the options without paying attention to what the speaker is actually saying. We've come to the last two questions now, so again, read the questions and the options and identify the key words. You probably took note of the noun phrases such as healthy diet, local food, and twenty people, and that's a good start in preparing you to listen. In these questions, however, we have some added difficulty 
from keywords in the questions that you may have missed. In question four, particularly satisfied, is important to consider when preparing to listen. It tells us that we can expect to hear a lot of good things said about the meals, but just one thing Sally liked best, which will give you the answer. In question five, we need to listen carefully to find out why she admired the guides. Sally will mention all the options given in question five, but only one will be about admiration. OK, now let's listen and read, paying attention to the words highlighted green to answer question four and the words highlighted in blue to answer question five. The food was the best camp food ever. Breakfasts included eggs or pancakes. For lunch, we'd stop on a beach for a picnic. The children sometimes complained there were too many salads and they didn't get burgers, but there were always cookies available, so they accepted the healthy diet. Dinners were delicious. We once had freshly caught fish. And best of all, I didn't have to cook any of it. Actually, I love cooking, but it's nice to take a break occasionally. The young men and women who were our guides were incredible. Their days lasted from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. They were responsible for 20 of us and our gear for five days. They cooked our meals, rode our rafts, set up our tents, played games with us on the beach, all with big smiles on their faces. Whitewater rafting was truly an adventure I'll not forget. Did you get the answers? Now take some time to read the words highlighted in green and blue and notice how they are paraphrased in the correct options. Question four uses the synonyms rest in the option and break in the audio and paraphrases particularly satisfied in the question with best of all in the audio. One of the incorrect options directly lifts the expression healthy diet from the audio. Although the audio doesn't say that the children enjoyed the healthy diet, only that they accepted the healthy diet. And finally, regarding question five, Sally doesn't directly say what she admired. So we have to infer this from the context. At the end of her speech, she says the guides worked with big smiles on their faces, which is paraphrased as very cheerful in the correct option. Sally does not mention the incorrect options too. Sally does mention the incorrect options too, although she doesn't speak about the guides being young or that they were few as a source of her admir admiration for them. So these options are not correct. Here's the full transcript. You can note down any interesting or useful words and expressions. I hope you found this presentation useful. You can find extra study materials online at the link shown here. And there are other webinars like this in our series that you can enjoy. And the best thing is that all these resources are free. Good luck with your studies and good luck with your English tests. Goodbye. <laughs>